Newsmaker Sunday with Fox 10's John Thanks Hook. Thanks for joining us on Newsmaker Sunday. Pleased to be joined by Arizona State Treasurer Jeff DeWitt. Jeff DeWitt, as you know, is an early supporter of Donald Trump, and he now has a new role as special advisor for operations. It's a volunteer post that apparently will not take large amounts of time, but um, Mr. Trump tapped you to continue on and help out. That's right. You know, I I'm, I'm, was honored to be such a... Good to have you here, a, by the way. Oh, thanks. Thanks, <laughs> thanks John. Thanks for having me. Um, you know, I was so honored to be part of the campaign and to get him elected and, you know, to be, to be called again to do more. I, I will do as much as I can to make America great again and, as we like to say, drain the swamp. And that's the mode we're in to, uh, to build the economy, to, to bring back jobs and anything I can do to help. I, Re refresh everybody's memory, Jeff, how you first became an adoptee of Donald Trump. And you became kind of his fix-it guy in a lot of respects. You know, I, I was the first elected official in the country to support him, um, and I had the, the opportunity to have met him and get to know him before he announced he was running. And so I was on from day one and was there, you know, the first rally, the first big rally he had in the country was right here in that's Phoenix. Right, that's right. And I helped plan that and put it together. I picked him up at the airport, took him to the event. That got everybody's attention. Yeah, that did. And, you know, everyone realized that, A, at that big rally and the big speech, you know, this is for real. They saw the support he had, and they heard that he, he has legitimate, great policies to implement that, as it turns out, were better than the 16 other Republican candidates mm -hmm. and the two Democrats that were running. So, Did you think he was going to beat Hillary Clinton? I did. I always knew we would. You know, it goes back to my campaign. If you go back a few years to my own campaign, I am a businessman turned, if you call it politician, elected official. Right. I went all over the state of Arizona, and I said, look, I don't have a political resume, but I think we need to do things better, and I want to give a businessman a shot. And then let's look past the longtime politicians. Let me see what I can do. And that went over really well. You know, I, I set records in the amount of votes that I got in my race. And when he comes to Donald Trump, he was giving the same message. And I saw that early on. I said, look, you're running nationwide. What I saw here, it, it's, it's, you know, it's where the country's at. It's where we are, where we have people like us that are stepping up to do more. And I know it's going to go over well. And I said, let me help you. And, and he took me up on the offer right off the bat. He's making uh, very quick work of his uh, picks for his cabinet. Uh, before it's all said and done, I think he's got to pick over 2,000, 4,000 political 4, appointments. Yeah. And 1,200 of them have to be approved by the uh, Senate. Yeah. They require Senate confirmation. Arizona Treasurer, State Treasurer Jeff DeWitt is our guest on Newsmaker Sunday. And he's really been part of the inner circle of the Trump campaign and now uh, President-elect Trump. Let me ask you a little bit about this Romney thing. There's four people in play. Um, Bolton, um, Romney, Giuliani, and who am I missing? There's one other. Um, you don't think he's going to pick Romney. You really, in the end, you don't think he will. Well, I, you know, it's, it's certainly an interesting choice. If he picks him, it, it's a very Lincoln-esque choice because Abraham Lincoln did a very similar thing when he brought in his biggest rivals to right. run the government. Um, is that in his DNA to just say, this guy said some nasty stuff about me, I'm just going to forget about it? Well, we've already seen him welcome Romney into his home and be very gracious. So, yeah, Donald Trump is, is about bringing people together. He's here's not the about meeting, dividing. right? Here's the, yeah. here's the meeting over the weekend. Yeah. And, and so, I mean, there, obviously, that's Donald Trump inviting him to dinner. And I think that shows a very gracious president-elect. Um, you know, I'll just say that I know that Kellyanne, you know, he's played her frustrations. Yeah. And she hears a lot that I hear, which is I've been contacted more about this pick from the base and from people in general than anything saying, you know, the, the base out there and the, and the supporters of Donald Trump are still very upset at Mitt Romney because he was attacking Donald Trump even after Donald Trump was the nominee of the party. And that's when, you, you know, if, there's, if it's still in the primary, it's kind of, you know, understand. So to the people but, within the, in the Trump camp, that's disqualifying to them, that he went that far, that Romney went that far, that you can't bring him on board after that. Well, I think what everyone would like to see Romney do, which I don't believe he's done yet, is to come out and apologize for that and tell us that he voted for Donald Trump. Because I think the last thing all of us heard was he wasn't going to vote for Donald Trump. So I think we'd like to hear what he has to say about that. But in the end, it's Donald Trump's pick, and all of us will support, because I'll tell you, Anytime anyone's questioned his judgment, they've always been wrong. And no, Donald Trump's no, been no right. No kidding. No and it's kidding. been amazing time yeah. and time again. So if he picks Romney, I have no doubt that he knows what he's doing with the pick. Um, but I think it'll be an interesting pick if he does. And I know that the other two, you know, John Bolton would be a great pick. Um, Rudy Giuliani would be a very popular pick. And right. a great pick. So you have some fine people to choose from. I don't know myself how it's going to end. It'll be completely Donald Trump's call. Let me go through a couple of them, and we'll go from most recent this week. Uh, Commerce Secretary Wilbur Ross uh, built his fortune by kind of turning around businesses. 
you know about him. Trump is leaning on business people very yeah. hard. A heavy on business, a little bit on political, not so heavy on academics. This is a self-made success story. He didn't just turn around businesses. He picked businesses off the ground that everybody else thought were dead and buried, like in the steel industry and some of these, where he turned these things around that nobody thought right, could be turned around. Right. What a great guy to have, you know, helping with the economy and trade deals and running commerce. He knows it well. He's done international, you know, he does international deals already through his businesses. Um, great pick. Wilbur Ross is a great pick. Let's check in on Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin, the guy with the funny spelling on his name. Uh, Trump announced Wednesday morning he'd selected him as a national uh, finance chairman of Trump's presidential campaign, picked him for the Treasury job. What do you know about him? He's a Goldman Sachs guy. He's a Wall Street guy. Democrats are pouncing on this stuff, of course. But what do you know about him? I, I know he's a very, very smart guy. Um, he's actually one of the people I interacted with the most on the campaign. Oh, really? Oh, absolutely. Tell Every me day. about him. Uh, multiple times a day. Uh, because he's a numbers guy, and he was doing the, the fundraising. So he was helping the fundraising, and I was doing a lot of the keeping track of the money. And so we'd interact multiple times a day on the budgets and the balance sheet and everything else. And he is one of the smartest people I've ever met in my life. He really is. Uh, and a very genuine guy and a very straight shooter. And a very, I mean, he'll, he'll do a great job. And he knows the industry well. He, as you said, you know, many years ago, he was at Goldman Sachs. Um, he turned around a bank. He bought a bank in the right. crisis. Turned it around and, and right. made it made it whole again. So he knows what he's doing, and I think he's a great pick. Tell me a little bit about as we look back now, reflecting on the campaigns. Since you were the money guy, you were involved in the money of the campaign. How much did you guys end up spending versus Hillary Clinton? How much she spent? Was I, it about half? I think it was under half. It was well under under half. half. Well, it's, and, 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 and it's a it's an even smaller number if you count all of the the um, extra money, you know, all the pack money, all the the super packs, all that that were on her side, that weren't on our side. I think that her total spending went over a billion dollars if you count all the spending. Is, is there anything the other than the brand of Trump, which is a pretty potent brand, people knew him already, but they knew her too. Mm -hmm. Is there anything instructive about how the campaign was run and applying that to how the country will be run under Donald Trump? Well, I think the, the, the best talking point I have to answer that question is that we were doing about four to five times the amount of events that the Hillary Clinton campaign was doing with one-eighth of the staff. If so that you're saying say he's going to run it lean and mean? We ran lean and mean, and we won, we produced, and, you know, in a very, very quality way. That's what we want. Isn't that what we want in our country? To do it like that. That's well, what you have in Donald Trump. For the Trump. people who think government has become too large, too unwieldy, and spends too much money, yeah. yes. Yeah. And that's what we showed. We showed it in the campaign. He lives it. He breathes it. And... Um, and, and the results were there when everyone said we couldn't get it done. Let me ask you, I, I keep going back to the campaign because it's so fascinating how everybody was so wrong. Internally, when you heard all this stuff about how great her ground game was and the Democrats get out the vote machine mm -hmm. and that Trump didn't have anything really going on the ground, he had no ground game, what were you guys privately saying when all that was being reported? Well, that part about the ground game itself, we had a great ground game and we knew we had a great ground game. And we, had, we were crunching all the numbers that you, you expected to crunch. And we had so many volunteers even, and paid staffers, everyone out there doing the ground game. And we knew it was being misreported. I mean, they, they wanted to make us sound like we didn't know what we were doing. And oh, all, it, all the time, 24-7. We internally had basically said, let's not correct the record. Because then they won't see it coming. If they knew how great the ground game was that we had, we figured they'd try harder. And they were playing, they were playing like a football team that's up three touchdowns with Four minutes to go. So you guys internally were kind of chuckling. We and were. Saying we're going we're gonna to snap these guys into reality on election night. Yeah. You really thought that? We, we had talked, I mean, myself and some other staff, we said, let's, let's leave it like that. What leave was, the best narrative out there like that because they what, won't see it coming. What was the linchpin on election night? I mean, to me, when I saw, um, I think when I saw Wisconsin go, I'm like, well, <laughs> we've got a fundamental change going on here. I don't think Wisconsin had gone Republican since 88, right? Yeah. That, to me, was the real, the bells were really going off at that point. For you guys, what was it? Florida. We stared at Florida. We, we knew, A, we had to get Florida to win. And we stared at Florida. And early on, Florida didn't look good. The first hour and a half, if you remember, Florida wasn't yeah. looking so great. And right. then it started to turn and go. We were watching it on a county-by-county county level, watching our results come in. And we stared at Florida for a couple hours. Once we saw Florida, then we started looking. You know, we, we'd said all along, if we get Florida, Michigan, and Pennsylvania, it's over, and we were right. Right. And so 
once we saw those come in and they were looking good, um, everything started like a, like a flood. And so, um, you know, I'll tell you what got the biggest cheer. I won't say who. You were with him that night. I was with him that night. Tell me what his demeanor was like that night. He was, uh, he was very confident, actually. Probably more confident than the rest of us. Even when things, you know, in Florida, we were, we were still real nervous about where that was going to go. He just said, you know, wait, let's see all the results. He was tell, very... tell me about who this guy is as a, as a warrior in the, in the middle of a fight. I'll tell you, he's, he's who you want to go into battle with. He, he is a never give up, never surrender kind of guy. And he outworks everybody in the campaign. He, he outworks the 25 year olds. I mean, he is a worker and a doer, and, and he's not a talker. He wants to see action. And, and you're, it's seeing so that all, you're seeing that already. I mean, he's, yeah. he's always, uh, the, the famous quote is, I'll sleep when I'm dead. He goes on about four hours a night. Yeah, I mean, and, and you know, he didn't want even 10 minutes of downtime. We, we stacked up event upon event, and we had it going. We wouldn't even plan in five minutes in a bathroom break. And I, I started to wonder if he was a, a cyborg robot because <laughs> he could just keep going. He's never slowed down. He doesn't drink coffee or anything. He, he's he just doing goes. this victory tour. Yeah. And uh, Thursday, he was in... Um, he was in Indiana, uh, talking about Carrier. Uh, do you suspect he will come to Arizona? Well, right now it's not. It's not in the in the plan currently because Arizona it was really kind of a seminal moment for him. He loves Arizona. You know, the times he came back here, he always pushed. Let's do another one in Arizona. I want to go to Arizona. He loves coming to Arizona. He loves the people here. And Arizona was has always been very supportive. It was the first right. big rally he had. He, at that rally, there were. So many people inside, and it was still double wrapped outside the building, getting out. You know, but they couldn't get in because the the. You knew he would capacity. win Arizona. I, I had no doubt we'd win Arizona. So, um, and I'm glad we did because I I don't know if I, I feel like I might have been personally on the hook on that one a little bit. You <laughs> no, know? I think you and uh, <laughs> even the Republican Party chairman Robert yeah. Graham, a lot of exposure there. If and Robert Graham deserves a ton of credit for for delivering that win. I didn't do anything compared to what he did. One quick thing before we go to break, Jeff. Um, Joe Arpaio, very close to Donald Trump as well. Mm -hmm. He was very supportive early on, as yeah. you were. Do you know if Donald Trump has had any word with him since all this happened, since they, yeah. Arpaio lost? They have spoken, and uh, Donald Trump reaches out uh, periodically, too, to ask about Joe's wife. You know, Ava hasn't uh, been in the best of health. Right. And Donald Trump's always concerned about that. He, you know, it, it's been great for me to see. When you, when you see Donald Trump and you, and you get to know the man, he's a very caring guy. And he always asks, even with me, I always ask how my wife's doing, how my kids are doing. You know, and with Joe, how's Ava doing? You know, and so he's always concerned about that before he talks about business or politics or anything else. And it's, it's, it's really great to see. Were you surprised our pile lost? You know, I was disappointed that he lost. Uh, you know, I, I like Joe a lot, and, and, um, but I think you could see it in the polls. I guess I wasn't surprised because yeah. the polls were showing sure. it. So I, I, don't, I would say just because of the polls, it, it seemed like that was coming. Do you but, believe he would take any type of position, in, or would there be one for him in a Trump administration? I don't. I haven't even had that that talk yet um but i know that he's well liked i mean he's joe's a really he's a nice guy i mean you get to know him and everything you know that whatever the image is out there you right. know he's a tough guy he's american stuff a sheriff but in the end he's a sweetheart of a man he's no a really that nice guy. that is very true we've had him on the program and i've known him a long time and uh and i wish him well and ava well yeah. as well uh back with jeff dewitt treasurer for uh the state of arizona a real close confidant of Donald Trump, and uh, we're going to also go through, as we continue on in the program, the other cabinet picks and kind of what they mean and what they reflect about Donald Trump. Back in a minute on Newsmaker Sunday. Back on Newsmaker Sunday with Arizona State Treasurer Jeff DeWitt, who is a close confidant of Donald Trump. He is going to have a position uh, right now um, taking on a role as special advisor for operations. It's a volunteer post. What does that mean exactly? What will you be doing? Well, you know, with a, with a transition, and you have very limited time to do this, you have 70 days starting out, now we're down to 50 days, where you're not only picking these 4,400 positions, which you're not going to pick them all right now, it's going to drag on to probably April until they're all really picked the lower level ones, um, but you're planning the inauguration, you're raising money for the inauguration. Are you doing some of that? Well, I'm trying to help and just make sure everything runs smooth with, with as many things as I can. Um, and you're planning the first 100 days, the policies to implement right away. Uh, and there's a lot that has to, to happen. Tell me about that first 100 days. You feel like right now they are crafting that, putting that together. Yeah. You think he's going to try to get a lot done quickly? There's no question. And, you know, previous administrations tell you that's obviously the best time to get things done. It helps that having a Republican president, we have now a Republican Senate, Republican House. Um, it goes all the way down. Republicans have swept the country. 
Republican majority of mayors in the country, they say, Repub majority governors. of Republican governors, yep. and Republican legislatures. So uh, all the way down, and Republican state treasurers. Can you speculate what will be job one? Do you think it's going to be Obamacare and trying to roll that back and change it? Do you think border security? What, what do you think are going to be the top issues? It's all going to happen quickly, bang, bang, bang. Um, but really, economy, jobs is, is number one. The, the, the tax environment, getting rid of regulation, which will include Obamacare. And so I think that's the first thing out of the chute is let's make sure everybody has a job and then we'll move on to the rest of the things. He's but working on that right now. There's no question. Yeah, it's happening right now. They are, they are basically out of the White House, but working as if they were in it. Well, you start crafting and getting everything ready, you know, running up the flagpole in Washington and, and you know, kind of get the wording right so that right when you take office, you, you start dropping bills and get things done. Let me go to uh, some of the other picks. Transportation Secretary Elaine Chao. She was Labor Secretary under George W. Bush, first Asian American woman ever to hold a cabinet level position. Um, before Labor Secretary, she ran the United Way. Um, Treasury Secretary, Deputy Treasury Secretary under George H.W. Bush, married to Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. Um, diversity, yeah. a woman, um, but very capable. Extremely capable, as you can tell. Very, very, very sharp and, and uh, looks to be a very solid pick. Let's go to Tom Price. This is a health and human services guy, uh, former surgeon, uh, orthopedic surgeon, early supporter of Trump, five-term congressman, one of probably the best-known people on what to do to fix Obamacare. Exactly. And that's a, that's a big role. He is known as one of the experts. I think... Um, that's a good word for it. Yeah, possibly one of the few people that may have read through the whole thing. Well, he really... He, his biggest thing is the government should not get in between the patient-doctor relationship. Exactly. Exactly. So it's another great pick. Betsy DeVos, education secretary, prominent charter school advocate. Trump believes in competition in education. Mm -hmm. he, that, that's, a, that's a core tenet of him. Uh, they have the, Betsy, uh, the Dick and Betsy DeVos Family Foundation. Um, supported charter schools, obviously, but a billionaire family. They own the Orlando Magic. A lot of wealthy people in, in this administration. To you, does that speak more to ability? Does it speak more to elitism? What does it mean? Well, what you notice are a lot of, of self-made billionaires. They're just successful people. They're people that know how to get things done. If you, you know, if you he's strip away... He's the, attracted to that. Yeah, I, I think just strip away the, the, the money title for a second and look at these picks, and what you see are people who don't talk, they do. All across the board, these are doers, these are people that get things done. A lot of times, that can-do attitude translates into success financially, but it starts out with people that know how to get things done. Let me go into one that you probably know better than, than many. Jeff Sessions, the attorney yeah. general pick. Yeah. Uh, Sessions, you know, is a real hardliner. This guy, and he even ran into a little difficulty years ago on Senate confirmation. Um, he made it through. They approved him for U.S. Attorney of the Southern District of Alabama. He's, of course, the Alabama senator. What do you know about Jeff Sessions? And so some of these people I got to know more than others based on how much time they spent with the campaign and traveling. And um, he was along, along with campaign a lot. Spent a lot of time there. Really passionate about seeing Donald Trump get elected. Uh, Senator Sessions is a great guy, really sharp guy, uh, and works, you know, works his tail off. Um, I like the pick. He's, he's a hard worker. He knows what he's doing. He's very well liked in his home state, obviously, as, as the senator and the job he's done. Um, and he's been off from the start. He's a really, really solid pick. What do you think in the end will happen with Secretary of State? It's, it's tough to tell. You know, I mean, I know that whoever, whoever President-elect Trump chooses, um, I think everyone's going to get behind and, and give him a shot. What does he do with Rudy Giuliani if it's not Secretary of State? I would expect Rudy, Rudy to be involved in, in some capacity, very, very ingrained in, in what we're doing because, uh, he's, again, he's been there from the beginning. He's been uh, such a staunch supporter. He's they really are job. friends, a long-time friends, yeah. right? Rudy's a really neat guy. He's an easy yeah. guy to hang out with. I, really I had a snowball him. fight with him in New oh, Hampshire right? before uh, a debate at St. Anselm College. Yeah. He's a very loose guy. He's, there's not a lot of pretense with no, Rudy Giuliani. He is hilarious, actually. When he gets involved, he is such a funny guy. Right. Very down-to-earth guy. And he's the kind of guy you love just hanging out with and right. chatting with because he has a million stories. So he's Trump like, likes that. He oh, likes everybody. It. Everybody likes him. Uh, biggest challenge, and we're going to take a break, but biggest challenge that you think Donald Trump faces early on? That's a really hard question. Learning about. curve? No, he's a quick learner, uh, and he's a hard worker. I don't think that's going to be an issue at all. Um, I think the hardest challenge he has is just 
the, the media framing things. It seems like some, some people in the media, not, you know, not here, but some of the media outlets are, are still upset about the way the election went. And, and you'll see something come out, and you see them just jump on it in a negative fashion. They're trying to frame things. And I wish all the media would just kind of step back and give it a shot. Let's see, let's see what happens here. These are good things happening. Keeping those, those thousand jobs, the carrier jobs, out of Mexico and in Indiana, which he just did before even becoming president, that's a very good thing. And yet some outlets are criticizing that. Yeah, it's, that there were tax giveaways. Well, and they say, and, and how can right. you do that? It's not going to translate to the bigger thing. And, you know, let's see, let's see how this plays out. Let's so see just let out. it play out. We're back with Jeff DeWitt, Arizona State Treasurer, and uh, close, close um, connection to Donald Trump, obviously, one of his early supporters, and is now in a volunteer post assisting uh, as a special advisor for operations in the Trump uh, presidency, soon to be, January 20th. Back in a minute on Newsmaker Sunday. Jeff DeWitt is our guest, Arizona State Treasurer. He's our guest on Newsmaker Sunday. Of course, uh, early, early supporter of Donald Trump. Has been really kind of in the inner circle. You were there election night in New York. Take me inside Donald, Donald Trump's brain right now. Is he nervous, scared, excited, feels that this is a moment he's prepared his life for? Where's he, where is he right now? You know, I think he's always known that, in a way, it's, he, he's been a man of destiny where we need someone like him to actually fix Washington. Nothing gets done in Washington anymore, and we have to do things differently. It's one of the things I've been saying all along. We can't keep electing the same politicians and expect a different result. And so, you know, he's ready to tackle the challenge. I know he's excited, um, but there's also, you know, he knows it's a daunting task, and he's, you see him working very hard to bring people together and to get as much support there as he can to do as much good as he can. And I'm very impressed with the way that he's handled it. How much does he worry about his own physical safety? I don't think he worries about that at all. I mean, you know, the Secret Service is the Secret Service. I mean, they're, they're very hardcore, and they should be, um, in, in how they approach business. But no, it doesn't, doesn't even phase him. He just goes about the business, and, and you know, he actually reaches out to the crowds, much to the Secret Service's, you know, dismay. A lot of times he, he'll go through and, and mm -hmm. he wants to talk to kids and sign things. And you will. We've got 30 seconds. You remain as, as state treasurer. Yeah. You're not. This job with Trump is voluntary. Right. You're just working on the side. I never did this to get a job. I love my job as state treasurer. I love serving the voters of Arizona. I just did it because I wanted to see a businessman, you know, change Washington and see us do things different. You believe that he will be a transformative president. I believe he'll do a very, very good job, and he will be a transformative president. I think we're seeing that already. Jeff DeWitt, good to see you. Thanks, John. Congratulations Thank on, uh, wow, I mean, a stunning victory. We're back next week on News.